Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll go through the sun flare filter in on one effect. So uh, what this filter is, what does it do to your photo, all the controls for the different types of flares that you can add. And I'll show you a couple of examples. Uh, really quick though, if you are thinking about adding on one effects or any of the on one products to your toolkit, check the show notes. I've got an offer code down there. It'll save you 20%, it won't cost you anything extra, gives me a little bit of support so I can keep doing more videos like this. So sun flare, uh, what this does is it takes uh, sun flare overlays that are built into on um, effects that come with the product and lets you, you know, lay it on top of your photo and you know craft it and shape it so you get a very stylized look. Uh, the examples I'll show you here as we go through the sliders and controls, they're landscape photos, but these flares work equally as well on portraits or travel photos. You know, anytime you're looking for a style stylized look. Uh, there's some like bokeh ones that I don't use very often because I don't want that for my landscapes, but I've seen them used on portrait work and they look quite nice. But let's take a look at these controls we have with this filter. We'll explore using this photo here. You can see that I've already had a sun flare applied and I've just turned that off. So we'll build up the look I was working on straight from the, the get go here. But let me add the filter to the filter stack. Here's sun flare. And there are a whole variety of controls. You can see it's already changed the photo quite a bit just with the default setting there. Like all of our filters, we've got the opacity control overall. We have a bunch of styles. What the first thing you would need to do in Sun Flare is choose the type of flare and then what they call a texture, which is really the different overlays, right? So if we open up Sun Flare, we've got Bokeh. You can see what that kind of looks like. Sun flare, which are usually like your soft, kind of you know, glowing type of, of sun flare, very diffused type of light. And then sun star, which are those you know, pinpoints where you, you know, in the natural setting, you've taken the aperture and you know, cranked it down to say 16 or f22, and you get those beams of light coming out from a pinpoint of a light source. Uh, so I'll stick with sun flare for this example. We have an amount, how little or how much, of that flare do you want? And then a whole bunch of controls over the tonality and the positioning of the flare. And this is really nice because it gives you the level of control to match the flare with the, the coloration of your photo. Like if this, for example, was you know some sort of you know weird, you know, like dingy color, this you know green color, it wouldn't work as well with this photo. And here it's just a nice warm tone. You can adjust that if you need to. Uh, we have brightness. So how bright or how muted is that flare? And saturation, if you need to make that, you know, I'll push the hue over here and see what that's going on here. I get this like bluish green here. If I need that to be really blue green or I, I want it to be almost dim and diffused, mostly like just white light kind of thing there. We have all those controls. We set all those out. Transform. We can position the flare. Now for this, I want to zoom out on the photo so you can see how this positioning works because depending on the size of your original image, sometimes not all of the flare fits on your canvas. Uh, other times, if you've got a really large megapixel camera, uh, you might not have the entire flare covering your photo. So I'm gonna hit Command minus on a Mac that is also control minus on Windows, just one notch. So we have this big empty space of the canvas here. So when I click this transform, this little pinpoint here, and I'll drag around on the photo. Notice like in the lower left now, I've got this kind of, I'm hovering over the building. I've got this bit of bokeh flare there. And I drag down to the right. You can see, okay, here's the other part of the flare. And then it starts to kind of straighten out. almost like it's coming straight down. So depending on the overlay, and I'll choose a different one. Let's choose, say, Sun Flare, like three. That's going to have two pieces to it. I can see from just the example. You know, here's the center of the flare, but as I drag it around, you can kind of see edges. You can kind of see like at the at the right edge where there's a tree there. It kind of the the edge of where the flare overlay is, and then it it, it the, the the software just does some extrapolation to push it out there. But um, my general guidance is this very hot spot that I'm hovering over up in the tree line. If I were to have a flare in this photo, I'd want it to come from a reasonably natural light source. So I'll tend to hover the brightest part of my flare over one area. But then we do have other controls. Like if you don't like what's down here in the lower left, you have a scale. 
right? You can scale things up. So this just makes the entire overlay bigger. We have rotation, so you can rotate it around depending on what your photo needs. And of course, you know, flipping it back and forth. This last button, this fit to canvas, this is normally what we do because we want the flare to fit our photo. If I turn that off, in this case, it doesn't look like I have too much of a difference. But in other cases, again, depending on the size of your original image, fit to canvas is just a convenience. It's just make sure I'll stretch the flare, you know, I'll, uh, the, the filter will stretch the flare to, uh, to match your photo and then you can do your fine tuning adjustments from there. Uh, let me reset this entire filter again. So we're kind of back to uh, something normal. I'm gonna hit Command Zero, which will be Control Zero on Windows to zoom back in. So we can finish off the rest here. Um, down at the bottom, we have these controls for sunshine. And think of these as a subset of the sunshine filter in effects, a different filter. This adds kind of a golden hour effect to the scene. So if I push a mount really far, you're going to see kind of a little bit of a, a dreaminess get added. This is affecting, these sliders here, this is affecting your photo itself, not really the sun flare overlay. But normally if you know you want you're you're adding that flare, you want a little bit of a stylized look, you can you can push this sunshine up some to give it a bit of a dreamy quality. You know, um, if I push it very far, it, it for my taste in this scene, it gets a little bit uh, a little bit soft. Have control for warmth so you can warm or cool the image. You can saturate the image. Double click those. This last one, fade, this increases a faded look. So as I push this, you'll just start to see this, you know, whitish, grayish haze come over the photo. And in scenes where you know you would shoot directly into the sun or you just get that that hazy, you know, over, almost blown out type of look, that's where this this slider comes in handy to uh, to accentuate that if you need to. So those are the controls of the sun flare filter. Let's walk through an example. Let's finish this photo off here and, and shape a uh, sun flare in, um, you know, in, in this landscape. You know, what are the things I'm thinking about? What are the things to watch for as you're applying it? Because understanding the sliders, important. Knowing why to use certain of them, even more important. So let's, uh, let me reset this uh, sun flare. And you know, first thing is just you know, the deciding what do you want for your scene? What do you want for your flare? Uh, I certainly don't want a bokeh type of flare for this. This doesn't make sense to me. It's not like I'm shooting through, uh, you know, glass or like, you know, um, any type of, you know, like it's not like raining out or things like that. And and the sun star for this scene, like, you know, just hovering through the different options, you know, trying to say, oh, let me, uh, that looks like more like an artificial light source. You know, maybe, maybe that might be the sun. But to take that and then use transform and say, ah, oh, let me stick this up, you know, where there's a little gap in the trees and make, it doesn't feel right for this photo. There's not really any, any real directional light. You know, turn that off for a second. This is a very overcast day. And so if any type of flare I want to add in, it's just going to be a soft diffused one. So that initial one that was chosen there, I, I kind of like, I'll just audition a couple of others because you can just hover over them and see how things work. What you can do with things like coming straight down from above, that's kind of cool. Um, but I do think, I, I think I do like just that very diffused number one flare that just is the default for, uh, for the filter for this scene. Now, it's strong. I, I don't want that strong an amount. Now, one thing I have is the amount slider. For my landscape photos, I like to leverage luminosity masks, uh, but in a little different way because uh, you, you, most times you can't just say throw a luminosity mask on there and have all you know dark areas just aren't going to have the effect. Light areas will. It, it tends to uh, almost make the sun flare disappear. I'll show you what I mean here. Um, once again, reset the filter, open up the masking area. Uh, if I hit the luminosity button. The flare is almost gone. All right, what just happened? So on one created this luminosity mask, a mask based on the tones. I view that. You can see it's mostly dark. All these areas looks like a black and white photo, but we're looking at the mask. All these dark areas mean don't have any sun flare here. The only thing bright really is the building and the bridge. Well, that's not going to work very well <laughs> if I want to add this sun flare in. The density slider is what I use to address that. Now I'll just watch the, watch the photos. I pull density down, you'll see more of the 
sun flare come back in. Um, what's going on under the hood? I press view. This is normal density 100%, so fully applied mask. Pulling it back, this is like saying brushing over the entire thing, like adding back in, painting in some percentage of the mask. And you can see as I go farther and farther with density, I'm saying make the mask less and less dense, more of this sun flare gets applied. So that's usually my one two with a sun flare in, in a wooded landscape like this. Apply the luminosity mask and then start pulling back on density until I'm happy, you know, and, and somewhere around there feels pretty good. You know, so really quickly before and after, and to give you the, the feel for, you know, what did it look like without the mask, you know, if I reset it, it was very, very bright. Undo that with that luminosity mask and a partial density. It's a softer feel. Now I'm going to play around with this back and forth. Notice in the lower left area, there's that bit of flare coming in onto the, the you know the shrub line, and I'm not too keen on that. I still have all my masking tools. I've got my masking brush. It's set to 46 opacity. That's pretty good. It's in paint out, so I can just kind of scribble away more of that flare from here. So I'm just painting away even more of the flare. Looking at the mask. You, know, you can kind of see my, my paint brush strokes. I'm just pointing, I'm not painting now, where that's not as subtle and nuanced anymore. I've downplayed that flare in that area and maybe even one or two more scribbles through there. All right, the last is just to, uh, to shape any remaining controls. Um, the saturation of the, the flare itself, I'll maybe take it down a little bit. I don't really think I need to adjust the hue. I'm happy with the position, and I will add a small amount of that sunshine look, that little golden afternoon type look to the scene. So before that change, and after. Still a little strong. I've got my full opacity. So this is everything of the filter, right? No filter at all, everything. Maybe I'll just dial it in a little more uh, subtle before and after. Now, let me show you one other example with one of those pinpoints of light, you know, a sun star, and, and for the landscape genre, what better example than to use a lighthouse? We can add a little artificial light into a lighthouse here. So I've got this uh, scene here, the Point Loma Lighthouse here in San Diego, and let me add our sun flare, and the first thing will be to choose Sun star, and wow, it actually almost positioned it directly in the center. That's going to help us out as we audition these different types of flares here. So I'm looking for something that is, you know, subtle enough. I don't want something too overpowering, and I don't want too much of a, a surrounding flare on it. This one's not bad, and I'm looking at the center of the flare, not so much the outside. 14 was pretty good. Let's just finish off. Uh, 15's not bad either. These other ones, yeah, this is this is too much. Too, it's too going to be too artificial. I like 14. I, I I like that one. There's a little bit of that yellowish tonation there. Already matches something in the lighthouse itself. So let's choose that. Transform and position that right above the light. Okay, so we we want that much. Now this is certainly overpowering. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're going to turn to masking again. And uh, for this case, what, what we're looking for is, you know, a little bit of a light and then have it glow and just disappear. And the center of the light needs to still be strong, right? That would be where the illumination is coming from. That's the pinpoint of light. So let's open our masking area using a masking bug and the edges shape. This means create an elliptical that will mask away from the edges. Notice that all that stuff that's out there before, if I stretch this, you'll see that the beams can grow, right? Or shrink. And for this case, I want a very small, tight center right on the lighthouse. And then we have the fade, right? So I'll fade it to about here. 
Okay. View. Let's see. Before and after, right? We can see that. It still feels kind of strong to me. Now, this is where your masking skills get tested a little bit. It can't really reduce the opacity because then, well, I'm not getting that pinpoint of light there. So instead, we want to use our masking brush and you know, downplay more of the light, more of that, uh, that surrounding light, but then make sure we just keep 100% strength of the mask at that little center there. So let me shift my masking mode over to a red overlay. Let's see, option O. I have my keyboard shortcut set up to do that, a different video on how to do that. So we can see what's going on here. And brush, let's start with a 50% strength brush. I'll push the flow all the way up. Uh, style default, that's fine, paint out. And we'll get a very narrow feather. Push this up a little bit, one click. That was pretty strong. Let's undo that and lower the opacity maybe down to maybe 25 or 20, somewhere around there. One click. Okay. Turn off my overlay. So we can see we're downplaying that. Undo for before that mask, after. That's better. But now the reverse. I want to take this brush size all the way down. Uh, I don't need as much feather. I'm using the shift bracket keys to change my feather. Capital X to switch to paint in. And now size that up. And I'll give it like two or three clicks. One, two, let's check. Pretty good. Even tinier. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just clicking a whole bunch to make sure I get uh, a nice right center in that. So I have, if I press the O key and I switch back to black and white, I can see that very, very, very bright center, right? Really, really bright center. And lastly, I can adjust the feather on the mask to just smooth those edges ever so slightly for me. So the feathering, I don't have to worry too much about it. I can use the global feather control for it. And now we've added this little artificial light, you know, like before, and after. And this is an example. You can get the idea here. You can do this to taste. If you wanted to add something a little bit more pinpoints, you've got those options. But th that is the Sun Flare filter. It's, um, it's a fun one to play with. It's an accent type of filter. And when either you want to add a certain type of mood to your photo, or in this case, wanting to like accentuate a single point of light. Could be the sun itself, could be street lamps in a street scene, lighthouse, whatever it might be. But I hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.